In this segment, I'm going to go over layers and layer management. <clears throat> layers are a very important aspect of organizing a CAD file so that it's easy to work with. For all the CAD videos that I've made up to this point, you've probably noticed that all the objects and lines are basically white. And uh, that's an easy color to see when you're working on a dark background. But if you imagine a complicated drawing uh, with lots of different lines, it starts to get much more difficult to see what's going on because you have so many white lines crossing over one another. So on a normal project, you can use layers to organize the entities in your drawing based upon what they represent. And then each category can receive a specific color so that a uh, drawing is a lot easier to work with visually on screen. And then layers are also used to control visibility. In other words, turning things on and off. And uh, most of the time layers are used to control line weight and line type and other properties that you want to be consistent based upon what those lines represent. An easy example of how layers are organized in a floor plan uh, is shown here on this small commercial office space where you can see that all the interior walls are kind of a dark blue, all the plumbing is green, the exterior walls are white, uh, the furniture is gray, the windows are yellow, uh, the cabinetry is kind of that uh, dark red color, and then the doors are kind of a combination of two different colors. So that's because of how the layers are set up in the file. So to go through the process of making layers and controlling how they work, you can look at the ribbon and see that there's a panel on the Home tab that says Layers. So you have two major parts to uh, the layer control. The first is the pull down. The pull down is the uh, bottom pull down here on your layer tab, layer panel, excuse me. And you'll see there's a couple layers that are built into basically every CAD drawing. Zero is kind of the default layer, and that's just the name of the layer that it's assigned by default. You also will notice often the def points layer, which is a standard layer in most CAD files as well. So you often will see those. And uh, I'll probably talk more about what those two layers are for in a more intermediate or advanced video. The other important aspects here besides the name are the color. There's a column with a small lock that indicates whether the layer is locked or not, meaning the objects are editable. And then there's a light bulb and a sun, and both of those basically control visibility, where the sun is a little bit more powerful than the light bulb. So those are uh, an easy, the pull down is an easy way to turn on or off some of those properties like visibility or change the color or whichever layer is currently shown in the pull down when you don't have any objects selected and when you don't have any commands active, it's considered the current layer. So if I were to start drawing something now, it would go on the zero layer because that's the current layer. So if I wanted to draw something on a different layer, you could just select it from the pull down and that would make the layer current. The second area that is important as far as controlling your layers is the layer manager. You'll notice there's a row of icons at the top of this panel and the one on the left is your layer properties or layer manager. So when you select that, it'll open your layer manager. In newer versions of AutoCAD, it acts as a palette. So you can uh, make it auto hide, you can change the size, and you can also leave it open while you're working on a drawing. In older versions of AutoCAD, this was not true. So you have your same list of names and you have the same on off through the light bulb or the sun. And then uh, the sun is actually called freeze or thaw because when you have a layer that's frozen, it becomes a little snowflake. You have the same color row or column. And you, in addition, you have some other columns that weren't in the pull down. And you can see that my layer manager is on auto hide. So then as I move my mouse away, it retracts back. Like other um, tool palettes, you can control this with the uh, auto hide icon on the vertical bar on the edge. So if you see layer properties manager up at the top is the X to close the manager and then the icon underneath that turns auto hide on and off. So when you turn it off, now it's gonna stay full size all the time and it won't disappear on you. So uh, as I was saying, you have the line type column and that controls 
um, what type of line the objects on that layer are going to have. Continuous being a normal solid line, or you have dashed lines, or dashed with shorter dashes, or dots, or any other type that you'd like. And you can load additional line types there. And then you have line weight. Now, how line weights are controlled is going to have to be a separate video because there are many options in how line weights work. And so this could control the line weight, but it also may not control the line weight, depending on the uh, print setup that is being used. So we'll come back to talk about this a little bit more. So if you're ready to make some new layers, usually you kind of uh, plan ahead and think about what types of objects you're going to be drawing in your assignment or your project and make the layers that would correspond, such as walls, doors, windows, furniture, like I went over earlier. If you are working at a, a larger company, they will normally have a template or a standard list of layers, and uh, that's going to standardize the naming of the layers, what color they are, um, what line type they are, the line weight, etc. So then you just kind of use that standard group. If you're working more on your own, or if you're a student or something, then you have more a little bit more flexibility in how those work, but you still want to be kind of smart about how you organize yourself and plan ahead if you can. So the uh, row of icons at the top allows you to delete layers with the red X. The check mark will set the current layer. And remember, that's the layer that's going to get used for any objects that you draw. And there's also a new layer icon, which is that little white rectangle with the sun, or Alt-N as your shortcut. So when you click on that, it will make a new layer. And then you can type in the name, such as walls, and uh, then hit Enter to kind of finalize the name and then you can change the color or any other properties now that you want. Generally speaking, you want to have is, um, a variety of colors so that it helps you to see everything on screen. Because then if an object's on the wrong layer, it's very easy to tell if the color is not what you would expect. Now, as you're, uh, when you hit the color box, it pops up with a select color uh, little dialog. And uh, these are the normal numbers 1 through 256 colors on this first tab. And uh, the standard index colors of 1 through 9 are available down here at the bottom. Uh, red, yellow, green, blue, etc. So I'm just going to pick a red for that for right now. And then hit OK. So now you can see that any walls that are on the wall layer uh, would have a red line. So that's how you can make a layer. Again, with a little icon there. And then I'll make one for doors as well and then hit enter and then I will change the color and maybe choose the green color for these. So if I know I'm going to draw walls then I'm going to double click on the walls layer and that makes it current or again you could just press that check mark icon while you have that layer uh, active or highlighted. Now one thing to take note of um, there's a column here for plot and the two layers that I just made have the little printer with the little red cross over it which means these layers will not print. And this is a common problem. If you have a layer highlighted and then you make a new layer, it inherits the properties of the layer that was highlighted. In, in this case, that was a layer that wasn't supposed to print that I had highlighted. So I'm going to click on the little printer there for walls and for doors to make sure that those layers are going to print down the road when I'm ready to. Otherwise, a lot of students get confused because their layers aren't printing and they're not sure why. Okay, so I can hit X to close this out if I'm done. And uh, I already made the walls layer current, so you can see how that's highlighted here automatically. Uh, but you could change it if you need it, or you can see that the doors layer is also there. So now I'm ready to draw a wall. And then I would draw a, a line the normal way, but you can see that it's red automatically. Which is good, because that means that it's going to have the properties of the wall layer. In other words, line weight, line type, um, color, all that stuff is going to be dictated by the layer. And that's good because if you change your mind and you want to change your settings, then you go to your layer setup and you change it there very quickly. It's possible to override the color or the line type or the line weight for a layer, um, but it's normally discouraged because then if you change your mind and you want to change those settings, you have to go to individual objects in order to change the properties. So if you see uh, color, line weight, line type, etc., for the individual objects. Normally you want that to be set to by layer, as you can see in my properties palette, because that means that uh, the layer is dictating those properties for the objects. 
So yeah, I could go and override that and pick a color, but you generally want to try to avoid doing that unless you really kind of know what you're doing or have a specific reason to otherwise. So that's kind of the basics of uh, how to set up your layers. Now, let's say that I had some objects already drawn and you needed to move them to a different layer. You can select one or more objects, as many as you needed. Whenever you select an object or uh, more than one object, it's going to show the current layer up here in the layer pulldown. Now, if I pick two different objects and one is on the wall layer and one's on the door layer, then it's not going to show a layer here because it can't show two different layers at once. So assuming all the objects are on the same layer and then you select them, uh, it will show the layer here that they're currently on. So if I needed to move those, let's say it's supposed to be on the door layer instead of walls, I can just click doors and it will basically move that object or more than one object from the one layer to the other. So again, you can pick your object and then pick the layer from the pull down and that will move the object over. And I mentioned visibility before. If you wanted to turn some objects off, you could just click the little light bulb and it will warn you if you turn off the current layer, it's, it's verifying, are you sure you wanna do this? Because if I were to start drawing more lines now, those lines would be essentially invisible because I'm on the wall layer, but the wall layer is turned off. So that's how visibility control works. And let, instead, let me turn off the door layer. Now you can see that that line basically just disappeared. So it's still in the drawing, but my door layer is turned off. So a lot of new folks get confused. Hey, where'd my, all my objects go? Well, the first thing you do when you're missing things is go and check your layers to make sure that the layer is not turned off or frozen. And then you can turn that layer back on and now there's my objects again. So that's the basic idea of how to control um, layer setup and then kind of use layers to organize your objects in your drawing.